So there's a diversity of different denominations of spiritual gifts. And uh, that's why I think we need to be uh, just more generally patient with people when uh, we see that they have a different perspective than us. Don't immediately jump on them uh, because maybe God's communicating to them in a, a different way. And another thing you got to think of too is like there's different uh, people are on different levels in their journey. And uh, one church might be designed kind of for infant Christians, for example. Like right when you find out for the first time the gospel, the mm -hmm. good news, uh, you know, you need to get some of the milk. And, and the Bible describes it that way. There's certain outfits that really specialize in that. And they're just going to repeat and, uh, you know, build a good foundation that, hey, man, God loves you. He's going to take care of you. You know, you, you can be, you can, uh, be secure in him. And they're going to give you the milk that's important at that stage for growing. After a certain point, as a person grows in stature spiritually, they need to move up to some bread. Okay, well, I've had enough milk. Like a baby, you can't just feed it milk forever. It's going to get a little bigger and it's going to need, it's going to have more meat on it. It's going to need to have more to be able to operate. So at that point, they might grow out of that. And they might have to go someplace where they get into a more detailed study on the word, for example. And a lot of times, because of the religious paradigm, the denominational paradigm, that other, that other church that was guiding them along in their infancy sees them as now being a traitor because they've moved on. Hey, we're not good enough for you. You're supposed to stay with us forever. And they'll even find different little parts of Scripture and use them as proof texts to say you're not allowed to do that. But you've got to remember what the real body of Christ is, man. The real church is His people. It ain't how we define it. So if they move on in their spiritual journey to a place where they're going to get a little more bread, hey, let, you know, let them go. Encourage them. Love them and send them on their way. You know, if they're not getting enough of whatever they're craving. You know, there's different kinds of food and people are going to be hungry for different kinds of food based on what they need to have grown better, you know. Sometimes you're hungry for ketchup or like a pregnant lady's hungry for pickles. I mean, there's a reason for those different tastes and different hungers. Is because there's something inside of you that's lacking that needs to build up more. So people's natural hungers and tastes when it comes to what they crave in God's Word and what different outfits and where they're learning, you know, we should allow a little more freedom for them to go in and have those needs met. And in God's church, when you look at it with outside the paradigm that we've created, is huge. And there's, uh, they're not leaving the church if they're making a parallel step over to a different conversation. Okay, now you're not in the little kid's corner. You walked over with the teenagers, spiritually speaking, right? And now you're talking about these things. And after a while, you're going to get hungry for meat. You're going to be like, okay, I've had a lot of bread, man. I need a good chunk of meat now. And, and the Bible uses this language. It uses the milk, the baby's milk, the bread and the meat as progressive steps. It's like, now you need some more hardcore information. Now I'm a fully grown adult, spiritually speaking. I'm strong. I'm a warrior. I am ready to go and fight for God in the battle. And I need some meat before the battle. You're going to have to probably find another conversation within God's church, the true version of that, not the religious paradigms. And unfortunately, in, in the world's view of religious paradigms, you might have to step outside of that and go find one that has meat. Because there's not a lot of outfits that have that full meat. And so what you have a lot of times is people yelling at each other and accusing each other of being traitors and dis yeah, it's, discouraging it's like you're each other. Hitting, hitting the unfaithful button because yeah. you happen to leave a specific sure. collection of people. Yeah, and they'll be arguing based on, hey, you're not preaching, you're not feeding people milk when you're preaching. Well, dude, that's not my job. I'm like the guy at the nursery. You know, different pastors of a church, like, uh, you know, that, that their job is to just reiterate some of those more basic, like, baby's milk kind of doctrines or whatever. That's their job, man. That's that's That was their... Uh, MOS, that was what they were meant to do. And then, hey, you know, the other guy's going to, the, the milk guy's going to accuse the other guy, hey, what are you feeding them meat for? Well, because I'm the meat guy. I'm training these advanced guys who have, like, made it through all these other steps. You know, it's just like the first grade going up in, in through grades. So it's not something that you can just look at unidimensionally and say this is the way it's always going to be forever because people's perspectives obviously change the more you go into it. And uh, the more experience you gain, and there's just a whole lot of stuff in there, you know. Plus, another huge one 
is people's convictions change radically or are, are radically different sometimes because each person in their individual walk in life is going to have different perspective on things and they're going to change or their perspectives are naturally going to change they're going to have different sets of convictions you know what i'm saying like if if one person really experienced like in in the battle or whatever you know like man i really don't like those uh flamethrowers or whatever they're painful or you know from the enemy i mean he's going to have a different set of perspectives than a different guy who who's been in a different part of the battle so when they share the story of the same battle well i was over here i was over here it was different you're going to have a different set of convictions and things that they're really on the lookout for so and that's why a lot of times two us uh, you know two people can look at the same exact outfit and have a totally different perspective of what's going on like uh for example you and i might have different perspectives on a different outfit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like your your convictions are different than mine. I know that. There's things that I'm convicted on that you're not, and there's things you're convicted on that I'm not. And we're at different spots in that walk, you know? And then just also like gifts that the God, God has given people. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes their gifts might call them to different places. So just because, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just because what are you doing together. evangelizing? You're mm -hmm. supposed to like be a prayer guy or whatever. It's like, well, dude, I'm not. That's not my specialty. I mean, I. You should be somewhat well-rounded a little bit. That'd be nice. But sometimes you really specialize in one deal and not in the other. So that's why a lot of people go over at each other's throats. You know, that is so unwarranted, man. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think? Yeah. In closing, just try not to bind yourself to a very denomination. I would just. Send a lot of caution towards that. Don't get caught up in the differences of denominations. Uh, there's one main criteria, and uh, I'd say you know, the Word of God is the authority. Yeah. Find an outfit that recognizes that. That might be hard to do, <laughs> and we can do another video on that because there are, and I'm not going to make broad accusations against particular denominations. That's not what I'm going to do because each one's so different. And you can go to like a Lutheran church or a Baptist church or a whatever church in any town, and they're going to be radically different due to the different people in charge. Different pastors are going to have different convictions. Certain people will be more honest than other ones. So it's on an individual basis, find a group where they actually love God. And that's the first great commandment, where they love people. That's, there's two great commandments. Like That's a good test right there. And the respect for God's word, like God's in charge. I'm not making stuff up. If they're reading their Bible stuff a lot and they're not getting too cocky and they're properly exercising those two basic deals, if they actually, if you can look at them and throw whatever discernment God's given you, if you can discern, like, these guys do love God, I can tell. And you can discern when you walk in that they do love each other too. That's the criteria you base your decision on, if you're a wise person. You can base it on intellectual stuff all you want. Your brain isn't going to get you anywhere it's through the gate. Doesn't matter how smart you are. There's going to be a lot of people who understood way less than the smart people, like the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They basically knew everything. And still, technically speaking, I mean, they had the wrong heart, though. I mean, they understood the letter of the law very well, but they had the heart all messed up. The heart's way more important than the letter. Not to say the letter is not good. We should be well versed in the letter because in the letter of the law is where it's contained the true heart of it. So. That's a whole nother video there too, but those two criteria, man, it's just based on like, if they love him and if they love each other, then it's bearing good fruit and you can know a tree by its fruits. If you go into a church and everyone is just PO'd all the time and yelling every, at, at everyone else and gossiping and sitting up on a perch like, we're so superior to these other people, that's not falling under that second criteria, loving each other, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as looking, if you can find a group of people that love God and love other people, and that's the authority, then every, everything else is minor compared to that. And yep, you, that's you, the main things. And you can work out the differences later on. But Yeah, so, so narrow down your choices to those two things. From there, then you can go, I mean, choosing a denomination, if, if you're basing your denominational right. choice on like what style of music program they have, then you're probably not even in God's church. Not to be mean, but that has nothing to do with anything. Or like what style church service. If you're looking for a religious experience, I could point you to some excellent historical, you wrong, know. Wrong focus, wrong motive. Yeah, wrong focus. I mean, 
Yeah, that's not what you're looking for. But if you seek to truly please your Father in Heaven and have it bear fruit in your life and you want that fellowship, that's the two main things to look out for. With, after you have those narrowed down, then you can look and you can see, you know, uh, what, what kind of people you have around there. And uh, listen to the Spirit. He'll guide you. It'll be right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eat more apple. Sorry, get a little long.